Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Even though I do my aura, my daily aura, I feel that I'm getting further and further away from my destination. Is it normal or bad? Even though I do my daily aura, I feel that I'm getting away from my destination. Why, why, why do you feel that you're getting away from your destination when you don't know what the destination is? That could be one, if you think it's something much more complicated than that then it has to be through help me at nurmuhammad.com that there are particular things that are happening. But to our understanding is what we expect in life is the greatest difficulty against sabr. When you expect something it destroys all patience. And that's why tariqah's secret is expect nothing and be happy with everything. If you are able to destroy the expectation then whatever comes by grace of God you're happy. Well, alhamdulillah, oh, if I was expecting the most magnificent kebab imaginable because I've been gone for two weeks and I go downstairs and I feel there's no kebab, what's going to happen? I'm going to be very upset Tawfiq. Why you didn't think of kebab for me? <laughs> he brings kebab to my house every now and then so. No. So if he's expected, alhamdulillah, ya Rabbi I'm hungry, whatever it is, it is. Then when you go down you're very happy, there was no expectation. So tariqah comes to teach, this expectation we put is the big devil in everything. Are you doing the old rod expecting to see something? What do you want to see? There's nothing to see. Put in yourself, train yourself in the, the Nat Sharif that we recited. What was the one we recited on, on 33, Shaykh? Oh, so I said, they were in, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you're a Pakistani or Indian and you speak Urdu, still read the translation because you don't really understand it. Because sometimes you may have practiced all your life just reciting it, but you never stop to hear it. So even you know the language, say, that's my language, I know it, shaykh. No, no, but when we recite, read the English or read it again slowly as we're reciting. Thirty-three, what's it? Subhanallah, ajmalika, ya Hassan, try. Yeah, get to that, khushtaka akhini. Read that verse, just the front, first verse. Subhanallah ma ajmalaka ma ahsanaka ma akmalaka kithe mehre ali kithe teri sana ustaq akhi kithe jalade. Say, Glory be to Allah who created him, Sayyidina Muhammad most beautiful, most best and most precious of mold. Who is this humble servant, Mehr Ali, the one whom wrote this share? to chant these praises and how impudent my eyes are even to aspire to the, heart, to the height of his love. He's saying, who am I to even see this magnificent light? Mean that he's a humble servant. So why would somebody be get angry that they're not seeing Prophet And somebody send an email, I'll give but the salawat that I can see Prophet right away, give me salawat that I can do that. Why? Who are you? Why are you coming through the door of pride and arrogance? So this way was meant to say, no I'm nothing, that I'm nothing, I'm no one to see the height of this beautific light, this beautific character, just keep my head at your holy sandals, this is my place. If you keep me to be at your farsh and your, your, your dust of your, your walkway, your threshold, means we train ourselves to talk humble, to think humble. And that when you humble yourself not expecting, then, then it would be an immense gift for Prophet to show himself. But if you're asking, show me, show me, show me, then well, what's the benefit of showing you? It was just to like obey your command? So that's they teach, be nothing, ask for nothing, I am no one. If you're not expecting to see anything then what are you expecting from the aura? My, my heart to open, I'm feeling it. No, I'm doing my aura because this is from love. 
I'm seeing myself at Rosa Sharif or at Holy Kaaba and they're just doing my awrad asking that keep my connection with the shaykhs, keep my love for Sayyidina Muhammad focus my energy on my heart and when I say Allah, I go, Allah, 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 I see a light on my heart, Allah, 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 Allah. When I'm making my salawats, look at my heart, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala And you make your salawats, you make your zikr, make your practices as if you're nothing and looking at your heart that let this light and my focus to be on my heart and hold, hold your finger so that you feel the, the beat of your heart and that your focus on your tafakkur is always on your heart not all the universe, I want to see here, I want to go here, I want to do that. So expectations destroy everything, try our best in life for everything to destroy an expectation. Expectation for raise, for job, for gifts, for marriage, for life, for everything that you have an expectation, lose it and you'll be happy with anything. You're expecting this, expecting that and you don't get it, you become very upset. This then becomes the key to sabr. If the servant can understand and live that reality, Allah grant them more and more of sifat al sabr until they become sabr and patient, then Allah dress them from all the names and attributes inshaAllah into their heart. Uh, Sayyidi, when doing meditation, La ilaha illallah, it says to pull the energy from below the navel, then go to right shoulder, then to left. Um, what to visualize and what's the proper position of hands? Yeah, you can hold your thumb so that your beat is always on the heart. You're seeing with your breath, an energy comes, a light that comes into your stomach. You're moving this light from la and this light is moving up into the head. La is on the head that my, my path is not on my head, Ya Rabbi this light let it to come and burn away my head and my thought process. Don't let me live my life in here. Anyone who lives their life in their head they're thinking too much, thinking too much, worried about everything, worried about everything because remember the brain gives you its characteristic that it keeps you in a box because the brain is in the skull, is in a box. It makes your life in a, always in a box. It makes everything to be like this, I'm in here and it's difficult. Why are you living in that box? Who said? So to be free from the box, la ilaha. The energy moves to the right, there's a reality for that, illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, illallah into the heart because you're seeing the reverse on the camera. So up, right, left, up, right, left, up, right, left, la ilaha illallah. Who? So this become then uh, all this light and energy is coming in, shut off my head and my life is not to be in my head, not to worry from my head, not to think from my head. But illallah that light of faith enter into my heart and my heart tells me what is accomplishable, not my head. Head is scared of everything, it boxes up your whole life. And that's why they say think out of the box, it's not a box, it's your brain, think out of your brain. Get free from your brain's limitation because the brain is imposing its, its structure on you. It hasn't seen anything, it's a piece of flesh inside a bo in a closed closet, <coughs> closed closet. So of course it's worried, it's worried about everything. But the heart sees entire creation of what Allah is bestowing upon it, it's the house of Allah Brain is not the house of Allah Qalbin mu'min baytullah, inshaAllah. Um, a few questions related to this one. Mm -hmm. Sayyidi, how can we power up against COVID because almost everyone has it here. I, contract, I contracted it recently and it's real, it's almost bedridden me. It's almost what? Bedridden me. Yeah. All the practices, that was the whole talk from tonight before you asked the question. That's why that whole subject came, was all about the breath and good character. That 
Everything is based on the good character and these practices. Why Allah is allowing this channel to propagate tariqah knowledges, the path, the, the path of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that goes to the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. Why Allah is allowing it? Because of what it's teaching, it's teaching tafakkur, contemplation. Oh that's uh, exactly what the shaitan is coming after. He's coming after the heart and lungs of people. He comes after the heart and lungs of people so that's why the whole talk tonight was that, I have good character, I'm listening to these adabs, I'm building my love for Sayyidina Muhammad and then I sit make my tafakkur, make my contemplation, Ya Rabbi let this light to enter into my heart. Read my ayatul kursi du'a and that's why we put out that du'a on video that it, re it recites it seven times. So in one sitting recite it seven times and then you meditate and contemplate. If you can't recite then you play the YouTube version. But in the du'a on the app of Ayatul Kursi there's a link to that video. Play that video and recite while it's being recited. Then have your ginger and turmeric because that had its own reality and energy and antibodies and anti-inflammatory aspects, black seed oil daily, all the vitamins that we put out at the beginning to build your immune system. So it was a whole prescription of practices to do to build the energy. Think that you have it, think of the flu. Psychologically don't let yourself think that it's more than that. It's a flu and begin to recite your du'a of Ayatul Kursi. Begin to make lots of salawats and asking for Prophet's intercession to take away that difficulty. Make sure that you have the taweez because these are physical and spiritual attacks. The taweez in the homes, the taweez on the beings. As soon as we made the show on the taweez there were many taweezes being ordered through smcmerch.com. It tells one thing that how this noble reality is not being taught by anyone. Because why nobody understood what the taweez was? That all of a sudden everybody wanted to get their taweez. And that's when you know the honour from Prophet to disperse these realities. Because people are not having the right armory, spiritual armory to defend yourself. You're, you're, you're going against something unseen. The President even said, we have an unseen enemy. Well Prophet and the greatness gave us everything, brought everything for us. Somebody wrote, is this shirk? So what? How do you even come up with this rationale? The taweez has ayatul Qur'an, has Allahu haqq. Allah Himself cannot be shirk with Allah. Mentioning Allah's name is not a shirk with Allah it's a glorification of Allah and they say, oh wait there's a hadith against amulets. Say, Yahu, when Prophet was teaching against pagan amulets in the time of Islam, they were coming with pagan things and tooths and whatever they had, horns and <laughs> he said, you cannot use your pagan things against and in, in conjunction with Islam, those are in reference to those. But Islamic history of ruqiyah and using Qur'an as a shifa and healing is well established. And you can't use Qur'an and say it's a shirk against Allah it's Allah's holy words. And Allah in the hadith of Prophet is that when you mention holy people, tanzir rahmah. So it has the names of mashaykh, has the name Allahu Haqq in the middle and these are all been given by Sayyidina Muhammad to these awliyaullah as an immense najat. Because why? Because of these spiritual battles that are on earth. So when we have the taweezes on our home, we have the taweez upon our heart, it's all Allah's izzah and might that comes with the izzah and might of Sayyidina Muhammad and the izzah and might of Ulul Amr. So when we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul adheem, what does that mean? That Allah saying, there is no help and there is no power to reach you except through Allah Well here you go, Allah sent it. Were you expecting Allah to come to you directly? This is arrogant and prideful, this is a thought like shaitan. 
So Allah sent it through these awliya because they reached a place in which Allah gives to them but didn't give it to us. We're not an arrogant people thinking, I deal only with Allah directly. Who are you to think that you can deal like that? So means, yeah, they reached a place in which Prophet inspires to them, gives to them, teaches them and teaches even from holy hadith. No, this hadith was in reference to pagan times, had nothing to do with ruqya and, and giving out uh, barakah and, and protection from holy Qur'an. And there are hadith of the Sahabi reading Fatiha against uh, poisons and attacks. So no, this is just, you know, people who follow that crazy belief and create confusion. These are all the armory and spiritual armory that a believer needs against the days that are on earth right now. And this is a… when somebody's asking, should I vaccinate against this sickness? I just ask you one thing, you do whatever you feel inspired to do, the tariqah won't come and give you a, an answer like that because many authorities are, are watching and saying, what do these people have to say? All we have to say is that this sickness is mutating. Wherever they think they controlled it, Allah sends something different. When they think they controlled that, Allah will send it different. So this is now not what it seems. As of tomorrow you may hear many different things are coming, many different sicknesses. Shall you inject yourself for all of them? Then when would it end? And you pray Allah it's a flu and Allah help you to survive your flu. And do your… your have your ruqya, uh, do your awra, do your zikrs, take your, your turmeric and ginger and, and live a good life, healthy life, make your peace with Allah and we see what else happens upon this earth because this is just the beginning. If tomorrow more and more and more then when does it end? Before you be so vaccinated you, 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 you'll be filled with all sorts of unknown, unknown chemicals and, and uh, elements. We pray that Allah protect us with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and when it's time to go, alhamdulillah. So after our dawah we say, what? Alhamdulillah we're ready to go Ya Rabbi. If we're, if we're trying to do, trying to do practices, practices consistently, consistently how can we repel can we amount of negative influence, influence from, from media, news, media, fear media, around media, everywhere media, and eliminate media, fear, media, not only media but media, fear of security, media, security risk. Risk, 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 risk? YeYeah lots of, lots of those concerns, there's a lot of the emails are saying the same thing, As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. That goes with the whole system. You know it's like going to the doctor's office and that, that's why then the, what was taught today at the beginning was based on that system that make your connection, do the breathing, do the energy. There's many different answers will come from that. When you're firm on your connection, your practices, your spiritual connection, doing the practices and you're firm in your level of how much you're committed to the tariqah, how you're trying to support the tariqah, how you're trying to participate in all of that, you have a yaqeen within your heart that begins to open. You have a love for Sayyidina Muhammad that should be immensely increasing. When you have all of those then the rest is control the influence of other things. You just have to watch the news to see what's happening and turn it off but you don't put it like it's a Qur'an being recited 24 hours a day in your home, that's a bad, bad sickness. They even have uh, psychological experiments when somebody who's watched TV all day, all night they actually come out and when they socialize they're using the exact words of the television. Words that you don't normally say all day long, as soon as you've been absorbing, absorbing what happens you come out and you start to have discussions with other people using the exact phrases that were being sent on TV because it's a medium in which to keep pushing towards you, it's vocabulary, it's understanding and it's khuluq, it's character. We say if all day long you watch the news and it's just qayba, 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 what's the hadith that Prophet gave to us? The one involved in it, the one listening to it are both under punishment. So just watching and saying it's entertaining, it's not a problem. No, Prophet warned us that when people are backbiting, move away from it. 
So if you sit all day long watching to this television, curse this other politician, he's backbiting him. And then all the celebrities backbiting this one and that one, before you know it you think this is normal and you come off the television backbiting everybody at home, backbiting this, backbiting that because you're just mimicking what you saw on this one-eyed device in your living room. You have, you have the one eye in your house, that is, that is the one eye, right? So when Gandalf looked at it he got scared, why? Because the one eye looked back at him. So if you look too much into it, it's actually looking at you. And before you know it instead of you using it to understand what's happening in the world, it's trying to feed you what it wants you to understand from this world. So who's the master of who? Right? If you watch enough before you know it, it took you and it starts to say, click here, click here, click here and it's indoctrinating you. But you understand and go out, do your zikr, do your practices and you watch our YouTube channel and let that channel indoctrinate you. Let the Muhammadan light go deep into your heart and into your understanding. But as soon as you click on the Muhammadan video it's finished, you go to 10 other things and before you know it, oh I don't know how I got here again because click, 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 you clicked out. So each one again going for your heart, which one are you going to give your heart is important. As Shaykh, 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 how can a person become of service for the tariqah and how can a person learn to spread tariqah in our local areas and what are the best ways to deal with jinn, magic and evil eye? A oh, 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 whole lot of things, <laughs> that's a good one, you didn't leave anything out then, inshaAllah. The, what was the first one? First part? Uh, how can we how can become, we become service, to service to tariqah? Alhamdulillah, you email uh, help me at Nur Muhammad and what service? can you offer? We have lots of transcribers, we need Spanish transcribing on the videos so that the huge Spanish population that also speaks English can understand the videos. Some transcribing in Arabic, there's n n not by one or two who are transcribing these realities into Arabic. So transcribing is great, IT is immense, IT, digital uh, graphics, video graphics, any, any type of uh, ability that somebody has, alhamdulillah. And then you, you give that support, you participate, you feel that you're cooperating within the tariqah and, and spreading the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Second question was when? And how can a person learn to spread tariqah in their local areas? Become strong, become strong with the love, the connection, the understanding and then you begin to spread the, the teaching of the tariqah. You can take the YouTube without you spreading the wrong information. Worst thing is when somebody doesn't know anything, say, oh my shaykh he can see through walls and uh, people are scared because <laughs> nobody wants somebody looking through their walls. <laughs> so there has to be a hikmah and a wisdom, no it's not about hocus pocus, it's about taking their videos and sharing them. So literally taking the videos, sharing them. Take the articles that they post on Facebook and online and sharing them in different platforms. There are some Pakistani WhatsApp groups with 30,000 people. So when you see on, on the analytics for YouTube, the highest amount of analytics is WhatsApp sharing because wow. the platform for WhatsApp is very shareable. So everybody shares videos to their wow. friends. So take the, the videos we have on our video channel on YouTube and share it to these groups. Find groups that have 30, 40,000, 500 people, 5 people and just keep sharing the video. So you share the teaching, not your version of what you thought the teaching meant whereas tariqah is completely against that. Where students who don't know anything start to try to teach the tariqah, make themselves a shaykh and then give the wrong information and that's dangerous. Just take the articles, post them where we're not posting them, post them on other groups and other chats, other forums. If you're Spanish, join every Spanish group on Facebook and take the video and post it everywhere. You speak Pakistani, take it and put it into different Urdu forums, uh, all of these clever things in which to spread. Can you imagine 100, 100 people spreading then everything would just sort of really spread. Take the app, the app is the greatest business card that anyone could have, so instead of trying to put a business card for somebody and say what it is, the app has everything on it and now it has the sharing capability. So you basically take a section, a salawat, a du'a, anything you like, you take that and share it on Facebook, share it on, on a WhatsApp group, immediately provides a link 
to the app for them to download the app. Then they click the link again once they have the app and it takes them exactly to that du'a. And you can share parts of the du'a as a part of the post. So the app has everything, has all of the articles, has our videos, has everything about all the different programs we're doing. Everything is just on one app is all located. So you can share that. Many ways that people can to help out. And the last part about jinns and energy, yeah. what was the, the last one? Um. And how do I defend myself against jinns and energies after I've been spreading your app everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, go? It's okay, that one we'll leave for next time. Um, also say the uh, someone was uh, very thankful for that awrad video that you posted, oh, the daily awrad. And then they were asking um, if there's some way we can also make a meditation one, step by step. Step by step like meditation So they can, it's like a guided meditation so they can always meditate at home watching the meditation video. Yeah, we, we got to think of how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll figure out how to do a nice guided meditation that, uh, that uh, yeah. I recommend, but they, they're thankful for All right, the good, like very good. And then, um, and, um, said that and spread that to people. But you want to do the Naqshbandi awrad and anybody want to do the Naqshbandi awrad, you know other Naqshbandis and maybe they don't know how to do the awrad, maybe somebody didn't tell them about the ta'weez, somebody didn't tell them about awrads and then you just send it and post it and share it. Um, 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 Sayyidi, please help us please understand, understand if there is a difference, there is a difference between difference Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the person figure, figure in history, history and Rasulullah as the locus of Allah, Allah knowledge, knowledge in every knowledge being, knowledge being knowledge as mentioned in the Qur'an. Is there a difference? Meaning what? No, that the, the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam is one of mulk and malakut. And if you're studying under the people of mulk, what we call the material world, everything for them is material. So outright Wahhabis they don't want to talk at all because they have a, a jealousy from the inheritance of who they're inheriting their Islam. Those that are not of a very extreme nature, they focus only on the external. So they have conferences called sirah, sirah conferences in which they talk only about the external life of Sayyidina Muhammad And they find themselves to be scientific and they think that we are factual people and we talk only facts and they, they focus only on the form of Sayyidina Muhammad Occasionally they may even go beyond that and talk about the beatific character, the nature, the light, the hair, the beard. All of the, the images of Sayyidina Muhammad which is beautiful but is, is not necessary for you. It's not necessary for you to focus on the, the color of Prophet's hair and how exactly was the design of the hair along the chest of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah says, every house has the correct door and enter through the correct door. So the greatest house and why Allah said house? Is because Qalb al Mu'min Baytullah. So it says, if you want to come to my house, you're, you're not coming through the right door. My house and my Divinely Presence is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad So the external focus is okay, it's introduction, you're coming to Islam, it's beautiful, beautific character, all the beautific features of Sayyidina Muhammad But it doesn't end there, that's merely the beginning of the journey because the real haqqaiq and the magnificent, munificent reality of what Allah has bestowed is malakut, well, malakut kulli shay. If you leave out that world of light, you left out the greatest story. <coughs> so the iceberg, you only know the tip and you say, oh my god this is huge. Oh uh, no, it's probably a thousand times more immense under the ocean. What's hidden from you much more immense than what you've seen from the outside. So why lose that immensity and the immense reality of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why then he prefers, teach about the light, teach about the light, how that light can reach to them. If you make something too physical you become rude about it, as if it came and went. 
And that's what these people who are trying to use their head, they, they go and spend uh, 20 days in Mecca and one half hour in Medina and leave. Uh, you missed the greatest sign of Allah you missed the reality of Allah His Allah's reality is, is not on the house that's made from stones. But what he said about insan that, I created Bani Adam, I created Adam and I blew my spirit into him. The one whom he blew his spirit and gave him a magnificent status is Medina. You should have spent the, your… how many? The, the 40 prayers, at least your five prayers for the eight days, for, uh, 45 prayers you should have done in Medina and spend a couple days, two, three days in Mecca and then leave. But everybody's doing the reverse, they're spending all the time because they didn't get it. And the thought of it is just as a physicality, we love uh, and they don't give the correct uh, salutations, that you never mention the name of Sayyidina Muhammad without saying Sayyidina. You never call by the first name, this is the king of all created universes. So they lose out on the whole perspective of the magnificence of what Allah has given to the light in this month. Uh, Surah 45, yeah. Sakhar lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard. That Allah said, We have bestowed upon your soul and I have given to your soul everything, everything, wa jami'an, and anything from heavens to earth I have given and anything in between. Means we left nothing out that have not given to Sayyidina Muhammad to physicality. Then that doesn't make sense. You read that in Sakhar lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard wa jami'a. So, why would it be physicality Allah's talking about? Then only come into your life and teach you, do you think Allah cares about physicality and the physical world? Allah says, I don't think of this world like the wing of a mosquito. The wing of a mosquito and your dunya and all your created universes like a wing of a mosquito for me. Why would Allah focus on that which is perishable? So that which is eternal, the world of light, then Allah focuses on that which is eternal, that, that lasts forever, not something that's temporary and is going. So same for that our focus should be that which is eternal and the malakut and the world of light and opens the immensity of the reality and, and the beautific reality of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. That's it, Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Basira Surat al-Fatiha. Jummah Mubarak to everyone online, everyone here, Allah address you, bless you until we see everybody again tomorrow night. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Click the link now to subscribe.